Yes, yes crew, this is your boy Zach Stanton and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we're going to look at using some FN synthesis to create that old school donk sound where we can incorporate some garage, old school jungle and some house influence in there. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay guys, so we're just going to go up to Serum. And we're going to select our basic shapes. I'm going to choose our sine wave. So as you can see that, nice lovely sine wave. Now, to begin with, just a little brief explanation of what FM synthesis is. So FM stands for frequency modulation, all right? So a little quick example of this would be if we pull over L041 to our cast pitch here and we press a note. And what we'll see on the spectrum analyzer is that L F O one is controlling the pitch and frequency of oscillator A, right? So it's controlling the movement. And we can see this here when I press a note. So what's happening there is that L F O one is controlling the frequency and pitch, so the movement of oscillator A. And we can see that because it's moving back and forth, okay? Now, what we could do is we could put it up to one eighths and it'll get a bit quicker. And sixteenths and thirty twos and sixty fours and so on. Now, this could be used for a nice little effect, a nice little wobble. I've got one of these in my track, Stop Telling Me, which is on Instinct. And also, Bernski has used quite a few of these sounds, these little wobbles in his own tunes. So take a listen to uh, Stop Telling Me, you know, just to get a little bit of an idea about what you could use this little wobble for once uh, you've watched this video. So I'm just going to get rid of this modulation here and <clears throat> just going to go back to our sine wave. So what does FM synthesis involve, all right? So it involves two or more oscillators. One being our carrier, which is the one that outputs the sound. So oscillator A is going to be our carrier. And then oscillator B is going to, is going to be our modulator. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn down the level of oscillator B, which is our modulator, because we're going to send a signal from oscillator B to oscillator A via the FM from B amount, all right? So just to go back over that again, Oscillator A is our carrier, which outputs the sound, and then oscillator B is our modulator that modulates the carrier, okay? So, I'm just going to go on our basic shapes and choose our sine wave. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now on our oscillator A, I'm going to choose FM from B on our warp settings there. And right now, we've just got our sine wave there, okay? Now, as you'll hear, when I push up this amount, we'll start to get more peaks and troughs and more harmonic content. And the more we push up the amount, the more we're getting some richer harmonic content now, right? But that's a little bit too much. So, if you're not sure what <coughs> is going on here, is that oscillator B and its waveform and its oscillator settings is modulating the frequency and pitch and movement of our carrier oscillator A, okay? So, let me just demonstrate that one more time. And as you'll hear now, when we're pushing up the, mod the FM from B amount, is to getting more peaks and troughs, which we can see on our spectrum analyzer here. So for those that don't know what peaks and troughs are, is this little mountain area here, that's called a peak. And this little down in the ditches area here, further down the mountain, is our trough, all right? So we've got our peak, which is at the top of the mountain, and then we've got our trough, 
which is down towards the bottom of the mountain. So like our little ditch. All right. And like so, the more FM amount we push in there, the more peaks and troughs and the harmonic content that we get. So I'll just show you that one last time. So like I said before, oscillator B, our modulator, is modulating the frequency and movement of oscillator A, okay? Wicked. So, let's make the sound. Let's make a donk. So, I'm just going to put that back to the init preset. Let's uh, choose our basic shapes. Our sine wave. And then from here, we're going to add in our oscillator B, our modulator. And we're going to turn down the level. So now we're going to send a signal from oscillator B to our oscillator A, our carrier. So we're going to select FMB, <coughs> FM from B on our warp settings there. We're going to push up the amount to around 30. So we're getting some nice peaks and troughs there, some more harmonic content. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to pull envelope one on our FM from B amount. And we're just going to pull the modulation amount down. So around 30, maybe 20. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to push up our unison amount, so our voices, on both oscillators. And we're just going to pull the tuning down to the right to around 10 on each oscillator. But from here, let's just pull, go down one octave on our basic shapes on oscillator here. And we're starting to get a bit more of a dunk sound now. Now what we could do from here is we're going to pull on envelope one to the detuning. Pull the modulation amount down to around 20. And then same again on oscillator B. Now, what we could do is just going to go down to our sustain, pull it down so we've got more of a stab. I'm going to go to our attack time and put it to around 20 milliseconds so we've got a quite a fast attack time there we could ex experiment with these as well if you like it on 30 you can keep it on there for a little bit more of a garage type vibe could have it on around 10 so it's a bit more stabby but let's just put it back to 20 milliseconds but like I say we want things a little bit more deeper so let's just go down an octave on oscillator A again so there we go <laughs> we're getting that nice donk sound now now what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I always like to fine tune my oscillators a little bit as I create, as I feel like it just creates a different type of vibe. Now we want to take the sound a little bit further now.
So let's add in our sub and same again, we're going to turn down the level and we're going to go to our oscillator B and we're going to do FN from sub, all right? Now, this really takes the sound a little bit more further now. So let's just push up the amount. Starts getting a bit more nastier. Now what we could do is we could just drop the amount back down and put envelope one on there. Pull back the modulation amount. Ah, yes. Now we're getting a proper nice dunk now. We could experiment with the octave settings as well on the sub oscillator. Let's see what it sounds like on one. Get a little bit more nastier on two. Getting more of the garage vibe going on there. Let's knock it up to three. Bit more garagey there, but let's say sounds nice on two. But let's just knock it down back to zero. Just to create that nice little donk vibe again. What we could do is we could then go over to our filter. Put it on MG low 24. Let's just open it back up so the filter's all the way open. Make sure all of our oscillators and our sub are being sent to the filter. Put it around 100 hertz. Pull over envelope one. Let's apply some modulation. Just shave off some of the top end of the sound there. And you can experiment with this as well. You could have it a little bit more open. For the sake of the video, let's keep it on around 40. You could even turn it down to zero. And have the modulation amount all the way open. Then experiment from there. Well, let's just turn it back up to 100. If you want it to sound a little bit more warpy, could put it on about 25% res. Get it a little bit more acidy there. Could maybe go up to 37%. Maybe go up to a bit more. Got a little bit more of a Mike Huckabee Deep House vibe going on there. Bit more, um, what's one of his tunes? Something, I think, is it some bass line? Something like 81 or 91 or something? <laughs> Could be wrong there, but yeah, you see the uh, point. What we could do, you could go over to the decay amount and push it to around two seconds. Let's just turn the resonance back down to around fifteen. Let's say it, go back to the attack time, experiment, go like 10 milliseconds. I've heard that in um, 
some of the new Seven Dars releases on Seb Zito's label, the Kyle uh, Starkey tune. He's got a nice FM synthesis type of stab as a bass line of his tune. But let's say it, let's go back to our filter section. Let's just give it some drive. Put it in mono. Let's go back to our decay. Let's put it on uh, one second there. So we've got our nice little dunk back. What we could do, and we could just layer a little bit, could add in some noise, send it over to the filter, just so we get some of that analog hiss. Let's choose a J106. Just turn the level down. <coughs> <coughs> now what we could do from here is we could start taking the sound a bit more further <coughs> Jesus now we just turn down the hyper and the size let's give it about 25% mix let's give it a little bit of width and then save again on the size start adding some distortion so we can keep on adding more harmonic content I start to get a little bit more nastier now that seems quite good let's say we don't want all the mix turned up so let's just turn it down and apply Envelope 1 on there again. To around 20% modulation. What we could do from there is just audition the different types of distortions as well. See what type of vibe you want to go for. That keeps it a little bit more donkish. I seem like to say gives it a bit more of some grit. I like acid to be fair. <laughs> but let's just uh, get it on tape. Oops. What we could do for me is just add in some compression. Just to control the sound a little bit. And then from here, we could start adding some more effects, such as phaser. This kind of takes it in a new direction, which I like. Got a bit more of a garage vibe going on there now. That's it, let's just apply envelope one on there. And then from here, let's just put in some reverb. Let's turn down the decay. Keep the size on around 35. And there, guys, is pretty much it, the sound. But <clears throat> what we could do is we could start changing the waveforms. So... We could try, let's just go back in our basic shapes. Let's try the BSOD square. Yeah. 
That's nice. Could experiment with the wavetail position. Let's try out some of these digital ones. The FFTs are good for this. See what the third sounds like. See, just trying out different waveforms and moving the wave tail position around, just taking the sound in a completely new direction. Sounding nice. There with the thirds, FFT thirds, it's got like that nice jungle vibe going on. I'm pretty sure I've heard this in, um, I think, one of Seb Zito's new tunes. I don't know the name of it yet, it's not released, but it's got like a nice, <clears throat> like old school rave donk vibe going on here in this sequence. It's literally like a few notes. You know, it's just that with some reverb on. Sounds real nice. Let's just turn up that decay. Sounds nice, man. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much it, the sounds. Okay, guys, so just to recap, I gave you a brief explanation of what FM synthesis is. We've also looked at making the dunk and incorporating that old school jungle and those garage and house sounds in there. Go away today, take what you've learned from this session and start implementing these sounds and these techniques into your own tunes. Let me know in the comments section below which is your favourite tune with the donk sound in and that FM synthesis vibe in there. If you want my help personally, you can shoot me an email and we can discuss things further. Or... You can visit the link below in the description where you can donate to the channel where you can help me keep making these videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.